Take, oh, take me as I am. Summon out what I shall be. Set your seal upon my heart and live in me. Take, oh, take me as I am. Summon out what I shall be. Set your seal upon my heart and live in me. A very good morning to you all. I'm Kirk Jacob and I'm based in West Kilburn, London and work with the Oblit Partners and Mission team. This morning we ask the Lord to to take us just as we are. We ask the Lord to summon us and to gently wake us up at the dawn of a new day and to breathe new life into the very fibre of our being. We invite the Lord to set a seal upon our hearts which may be restless from the night's sleep or it may be longing for unknown chartered waters that lie ahead of us today. I would like to thank you for choosing to pray with us as we're part of one diverse Oblet family and certainly one body in Christ. We take a few quiet moments to invite the God of our restless and yearning hearts to enter deeply into our lives, just as we are, and to calm our worries, anxieties, and concerns, whatever they may be, and to fill us with this deep love and compassion. Today we will hear a lot of use of hands in our gospel reading. So as we prepare to enter to listen to that gospel, so if, so if we can, I invite us to use our hands to bless ourselves as a reminder of our baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will now listen to our scripture reading, which is taken from St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 3, verse 1 to 6. Jesus went into a synagogue, and there was a man there who had a withered hand. And they were watching him to see if he would cure him on the Sabbath day, hoping for something to use against him. He said to the man with a withered hand, Stand up out in the middle. Then he said to them, Is it against the law on the Sabbath day to do, to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they said nothing. Then grieved to find them so obstinate, he looked angrily round at them and said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched out and his hand was better. The Pharisees went out and at once began to plot with the Herodians against him, discussing how to destroy him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We take a moment of silence to mull on this challenging gospel reading and to allow a word, phrase or image to speak to our hearts. I don't know about you, but when listening to this reading, I pick up a couple of strong emotions interweaving with each other. And they play itself out in the middle of the stage in that synagogue or church for us today. It is the tension between the angry look of Jesus directed at the obstinate religious authorities of his time. Equally, at the same time, I see Jesus giving a clear, firm instruction to the man with the withered hand to stretch out his hand. So here we may sense the deep compassion of Jesus giving the direct words to heal the man whose hand was with it. For yourselves, I invite you to stay with whatever deep emotion the scripture text evokes from you. 
maybe take a few moments later on in the day to listen to it in your mind's eye. Notice the characters in the gospel and see if any further emotions are drawn out from any of them that strike a chord deep within you. They are all valid since they belong to you and to me. Now looking closely at this healing ministry, we find that Jesus lands himself in hot water with the authorities. Since he is pushing the boundaries of the Jewish law to its limits by choosing to do healing activities on the Sabbath, which is meant to be a day of rest. And no activity, especially the use of hands, whatsoever. Yes, in the Jewish law, you're not even allowed to turn on a light switch. I have a Jewish rabbi friend, Ellis, and he and his household leave the light on from the Friday evening right through the whole of Saturday until their Sabbath day ends. Dare I say he has a stiff electric bill each month. Gone are the days when our Sundays used to be the Christian Sabbath and when shops used to be semi-open and some of them even closed. However, our culture has changed so much and with the advent of COVID-19 there still these days, we may find ourselves asking which day of the week it is, since Mondays may feel like Sundays in our minds. And today Jesus asks you and me a key question. Is the Sabbath meant to save life or to kill? We could replace the word Sabbath with life choices to do with our conscience, as it's a very fine line between saving and terminating life. We don't have to go too far and just look at the hidden culture of eugenics and euthanasia, or more overt daily stabbings or shootings we sadly hear on our news. During the height of the COVID, the medical world, certainly in England, were given instruction to not resuscitate the person if the person collapsed with cardiac arrest due to risk of contracting COVID from the person concerned. And hence, defibrillators were introduced. So a lot of tough choices were placed and are still being placed on medical personnel to cope with high levels of stress experienced in hospitals, care homes, nursing homes and in the community, which reached their breaking limits. Yes, folks, we all need a gentle reminder from time to time that life is precious, life is urgent, and Jesus leaves it in our hands to choose life always. And we pray. Loving and compassionate Jesus, we ask you to give us that sensitive backbone courage which you had when you witnessed arrogance and injustice. Help us to be builders of your kingdom and not our self-sufficient kingdoms. Encourage us when we are paralyzed by excessive fear, worry and anxiety. Help us to model St. Eugene as he chose to leave nothing undared for the gospel and strive to always be close to the people we will encounter today and each day. May we, like him, take one small step at a time to reach out to the poorest, especially the unseen lepers hidden in our communities. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. We bring our time of prayer to a close by blessing ourselves, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for taking the time to be part of this morning prayer. I wish you all a very blessed day. God bless. Take care of yourselves and each other.